Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar and I am angry. <laughs> oh man, ladies and gentlemen, if I despise something, it's when an influencer uses their position to basically influence a lot of younger individuals in their audience and potentially get them to lose their money, okay? I feel like when you have a lot of followers and subscribers, that you should probably not tweet things out that could potentially screw someone over financially, right? Now, I'm not here to explicitly state that anybody mentioned in this video or any group in this video is necessarily a, a, a scam or a deceptive practice or an organization performing deceptive deeds. What we're about to see here will look very circumstantial, okay? But in my opinion, I am, lo opinion, I am looking at something that I feel is uh, the dots are connecting too goddamn well. Now, in this situation, this is a token called Save the Kids. If you don't know what a token is, welcome to the world of crypto, okay? Where pump and dumps happen on an hourly basis. So this is the Save the Kids token. On a mission to build a better word for kids. World, sorry. For kids. Giving a future worth living. When a kids token is traded, 1% of the 3% tax on that transaction is donated to the Binance Charity Wallet to help with projects that help children with the resources they need to live need they need live a long and healthy life blockchain verified not english verified join us on our trip to the moon while helping kids around anytime you see trip to the moon it's not believable now because i'm in the middle of a big move Help with projects that help children with the resources they need to live need. They need live a long and healthy life. Blockchain verified, not English verified. Join us on our trip to the moon while helping kids around anytime you see trip to the moon. It's not believable. Now, because I'm in the middle of a big move right now, I really don't want to deal with any false copyright strike nonsense. I'm not in the mood for that kind of stress right now. Uh, I'm actually just going to play well within fair use screenshots of their primer video which is well available on the actual website for anybody to go and check. And it consists of the ambassadors who are pushing this coin, uh, notably Face K, uh, Face Jarvis, pretty high-ranking members. If you don't know who Jarvis is, he's the person that cried when they got banned off of Fortnite for running uh, third-party hacks, uh, which that's going to happen. And you've also got Ricegum in this case, who is not shy from any controversy regarding shady sponsorships. We'll get to that one in a bit. Then you've got the actual uh, tokenomics of this coin too, which I guess I'll read out real quick. Uh, a BEP20 token, redistributing wealth to both hodlers and charities. 1 billion supply, 3% fees, and dollar kids. That's their, that's their ticker, kids. So you can buy some kids. That's, you know, it just rolls off the tongue so well, right? Oh, would you look at that? Redistributing wealth and helping children out. God bless. Now, you could imagine, did these did these guys tweet about this to their audience? You bet. You can see that Face K tweeted, extremely excited to announce that I am an ambassador for a project that is coming very soon. In fact, let's go to the people that we've seen. Face Jarvis, it's about time. Excited to announce that Save the Kids BSA launches tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This project is going to change lives. Be a part of this project. Join the Telegram. Yeah, so Telegram is basically where everyone here convenes to talk about this shit coin or shit token. Let's go look at what our boy Ricegum is saying. Hey, oh, guys, super excited to be an ambassador for Save the Kids BSC. This is going to be one of the biggest charity tokens ever on the BSC network. Launches on June 5th at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Tap in. All right. Now, wow, they really gave their support here. Well, let's go look at what these people have been talking about. Now, if we look at a website known as Trend Maps, you can see that this tweet right here, Ricegum AO guys, the one that we just read, had apparently 5,000 likes, 5,213 likes, 235 retweets, right? You can't access that page anymore. The page I just showed you was a Google cache version, meaning that Google cached it. Google captured these guys in 4K HDR. See, if you go hit view on Twitter, you'd be surprised to wonder, ah, tweet has been deleted. Ha! <laughs> ha! Wow! Well, it seems like Ricegum may have deleted his tweet. What about Jarvis? Surely Jarvis wouldn't delete that tweet. Phase Jarvis, save the kids token is live. Now, if you click on that, oh, 404 not found. Well, let's go look at the Google cached version to see what Google has said. Ah, save the kids token is live right now. This is going to be the biggest charity coin ever save the kids not financial advice i'm glad he mentioned that okay <laughs> i'm actually really glad they said not financial advice for some reason a 
lot of these people think that by saying those three magic words, you're totally exempt from a potentially uh, damning lawsuit. But uh, let me just tell you this much. Do you honestly believe when the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, the federal government the, of the United States comes down clamping that a judge is going to look at those three magic words? Oh, they said not financial advice. That's cool, guys. That's cool. It's okay. It's okay. We can't, we can't do anything. You think the SEC is going to make sure that holds weight? No, not in the slightest. When the hammer comes down, those three magic words are not going to save any of these coin chillers when due process comes. June 5th, 2021. Roughly the dates are matching more than they fucking should. All right. June 4th and then June 5th. Let's view on Twitter for a second. And it's been deleted. Wow. It's like after the rug has been pulled, so to speak, all these tweets magically delete themselves. Thank God for Google's cache to be capturing all of this. If you guys have any questions about Google cache, all right, leave it up with the billionaire tech overlords that we have capturing everything in 4K. And I would argue deleted tweets is sort of that first discovery moment for considering something to be just a little dubious, a little shady. Ricegum deleting certain tweets. Would Ricegum be part of something shady? This is the same guy who made videos titled how I got AirPods for four dollars all right you know AirPods you know these fuckers from Apple they cost over a hundred something two hundred dollars depending on where you live premium Apple headphones all right for four dollars <laughs> okay I've covered this video back when it came out and I laughed at it then yeah so this is the uh, website full context mystery brand where you could stick Centenarios Rolls Royces in these mystery boxes and I'm sure these cars delivered right I'm sure there was no shenanigans right like Jesus Christ it doesn't get more painfully obvious that this is just complete nonsense I won both vapor max and the 97 off whites it just didn't show me winning it but they hooked it up all right I guess all right I can only tolerate less than 10 seconds let's go to the actual meeting potatoes so he was basically on a website where he was unboxing bullshit like this so for instance he unboxed these sneakers off white vulture or whatever the fuck it was uh low white and he won this apparently right apparently he got this and that's pretty much what it came down to so he was just unboxing this shit in front of his kids fans right you might be wondering this respectable website that he was unboxing all these crazy products on where are they now well he has the link right here mystery brand thanks mystery brand for partnering with me dude straight up just admitted everything where does mystery brand go to it's fucking dead okay this scam that mystery brand was running has been fucking gone it is dead this was a website where lamborghinis were opened in fucking unboxings all right if you don't if, if you have any reason to question it you are absolutely right you are sane <sighs> Okay, so now that we've got good old-fashioned, uh, a line of weird, dubious behavior, let's whittle on back to good old-fashioned save the kid coins, okay? So, this is a coin that tries to build a better world for kids, right? So let's go to the tokenomic section, alright? Total supply, save the kids launches on June 5th, lining up with the date of their, of, of all these ambassadors coming together to basically uh, shill out this coin. Liquidity lock, transaction tax, so here they show you how there's an automatic 3% transaction tax which is then divided to one percent back to locked liquidity one percent back to holders and then one percent goes to charity right now if you look at all these guys they have basically their idea of pre-launching so social media channels launched the ambassadors are promoting the token then they launch on june 5th 3 p.m as we've seen before then one week listings for cmc and coin gecko releasing new ambassadors then two to four weeks where they're updating the roadmaps continuing with marketing and plan and promotions it's been a good solid two weeks so two to three weeks is roughly where we're looking at in my timeline right now if you look at their actual uh you look at their actual promoters they have them listed right here on the website they're not hiding it they've got phase tico phase k phase rice i'm oh, sorry not phase rice rice gum phase jarvis phase nikon and then you've got these developers lucas and tam now lucas who's the developer of this coin has a twitter account that you can access right here which takes you to official you know whatever here he types in crypto it doesn't take fucking mr magoo to realize that says june 2021 of a join date meaning that lucas either came out of the fucking womb developing this shit coin or there's no history behind this lucas developer character so out of this one character get in touch with with all of these massive e celebrities to shell out this one coin that's a question i think we all can have now this is the save the kids white paper which i guess is their quick explanation and if you look at it what our story welcome to save the kids we are a token created in collaboration between influencers and crypto devs with the intention of having a positive impact on the world oh yeah 
Oh, yeah? Tokenomics. To save the kids token is designed to create a stable coin that appeals to both traders and holders while raising money for children across the world. So, gee, it's like the second coming of Christ, except he was a Bitcoin developer, okay? We get it, all right? We understand. What sets us apart? Ambassadors. Pumpers is what they have. We know how difficult finding legit token projects can be. It's difficult to know when something is a rug pull and when the token developers truly want to do good. That's why we partnered with several ambassadors to give investors the social proof and confidence that we're in it for the long haul. I want you to whittle on back in your white paper and realize when hiring Ricegum, a guy that was unboxing crates from a dubious website in front of his child audience seemed like a good fucking ambassador to bring on, okay? I'm not saying you have to be Mr. Rogers on the internet to work together, but it's probably a lot better than somebody who sh basically showed fake unboxings or at least partnered unboxings. I can't even claim if they were fake or not. I mean, the website is down at this point, so who fucking knows? But these people say partnering with social media gurus and big influencers is a good sign that they're not out there committing rug pulls. Now, if it's something to notice about rug pulling is that's exactly what fucking happens. So if you look at this graph of save the kids, which is their token, right? The kids token. You can see that these guys have basically gotten started on June 5th, right? Where their token was traded pretty positively and they were priced at 0, 0.0. So basically one penny, 1 point, 1 1.5 pennies. Okay. Now, after literally a fucking day, they started dropping and they have lost, I shit you not, over 90% of their overall value since this coin has come out. It has not shown any sign of coming back. It is a dead coin. It has went from one penny to 0.001 penny. A fucking hundred, a tenth of the penny at this point. The value is gone. This is a dead coin, all right? And as you can imagine, they had a bunch of sales, and immediately as soon as the coin came out, there were so many coins being dropped into the market, it absolutely killed its value. Now, we, we, we literally read from these people that they wanted to partner with ambassadors that clearly want to give a good sign that the coin is going to be healthy or a token will be healthy. One of the members here, Phase K, all right, just to just to reiterate, Phase K over here is the kind of guy that said, "Hey, Clue Coin is going nuts." Another coin in this case, with the market in its current state, this is crazy. I'm not going to be. I'm going to be watching this one for a while. Rocket ship to the moon. Hashtag Clue Coin. Not financial advice. Now, if we look at Clue Coin's value, you can see that he tweeted this around May 19th. What do you think its value was May 19th? Right? Right, so this is May 20, May 21st, right? May 22nd. Whoa, Clue Coin. Clu wow, it I guess it, I guess it did go nuts for a day or two, and then it just started fucking selling off like no tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sure the people who got in on this train when he was hyping it up on the 19th must have seen their hundred dollars that they put in jump to 200, 150, whatever. So they made money, and then they decided to hold Clue Coin because it's going to the moon, and then it just immediately drops. And these people who put money at this point are now fucking literally talking to their therapist at this point, all right? So this is how these ruck pull scams kind of work, all right? I'm not saying ever that Face K is behind this. He's not scamming anyone specifically. All he said was it's going nuts, and I guess he wasn't wrong. But you understand the implication. When a big account tweets this shit out, there's going to be a lot of people who like it and retweet it, and there's going to be a lot of individuals who, even if this isn't financial advice, they will funnel their money into it. That is why I said at the beginning, it is a moral responsibility, okay? A fucking moral response. I'm not Mr. Moral Man, okay? I'm a degenerate shitposter on the internet. It is a moral responsibility to not go out of your way to even mention this nonsense. You might make a lot of money, okay? You might make money. Hey, you might even lose money. But there are people who are literally putting their livelihoods on the line. And we can say it's their fault. Hey, you're an adult. You're responsible. But why even begin it? Why even involve our own fans in the first place? That is fucking disgusting, okay? Now, during the making of this video, I actually ratioed this tweet by pointing out how bad this graph dropped, to which the next point was the actual tweet that FaZe K made being deleted. Now, of course, you can see when it says fail to load tweet, that's a tweet that's been deleted, okay? So it's gone. That's that's where we've evolved to at this point. And I, I, I feel like getting rid of a tweet is only just a little bit more damning since you really can't hide evidence when it's been cataloged this hard, not just on screenshot territory, but also on the Google Cache territories. It's a little wild seeing this. But don't worry, guys. Not financial advice. That's, that's totally going to work when the SEC clamps down, right? 
Now, one of the things that we have to look at in this scenario that's kind of a little more dubious is have they been giving money to charity, right? So they've got audits, they've got charities, all of it. I'm going to go over each and every single bit of this. If you click on the charity wallet, you can actually see that these guys made a transaction on the 6th, literally a day after this coin was being sold to the Binance charity wallet. And they made that transaction in what appears to be 25 0.4 million kids kids token right it's a weird fucking token name all right i, I don't know if they were memeing or whatever but they basically transacted 25.4 million kids now let's go look at the value of 25.4 million kids now yeah so here we've got the pancake swap trade so if we type in all this kid amount right now for instance if i open up just kate real quick and i put the value here real fast uh, we can just get rid of the commas like so and copy this amount into the situation. Now it gives us 129 BNB tokens. I'm going to round that up just to like 130. Actually, I'll round it down to 129 because that's how fucking math works. So if we do 129 BNB tokens to USD, all right, which is the standard fiat currency equivalent, this translates to $45,804 as of today's conversion result. Uh, you're going to get some varying results like 39,000. Anyways, that is that is the money that apparently was sent over to that account. Now, here's where it gets a bit dubious in this situation, okay? So from what I'm deciphering from this actual transaction, they sent the actual kids token to that Binance charity. Now, I don't know if they've converted it to a different currency before they've done that, but the idea here is if it's transacted in the kids token, from what we've seen over here, then uh, they've transacted it on the 6th of June, meaning that its value was closer to that one penny amount we saw earlier. Now, if they sent that amount in the kids token, what's really weird is that now, if you look at it, let's say, to a different uh, currency before right they've now, done that, but, uh, but the idea value is it's a it's, it's a 20,000 meaning that the donation token, amount because of the devaluation of the currency then uh, the donation also devalued the of as June, that currency went that again that's under the implication that, 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 that wasn't earlier. transferred in now, BNB or some sort of they stable that coin currency the kids that token, retains its what's value what's really weird if is it was transferred in that kids token amount and it stayed like that right now that means that donation amount that initially was sent at the value of one penny has now lost 90 percent of its value so they ended up also having an audit in this case, right? And when we open up the audit, all right, it comes from a company known as Tech Rate. There's nothing wrong with the company Tech Rate. In fact, if you want to look at what Tech Rate does, these are guys that basically serve as consulting groups and basically they test blockchains, right? Now, they've been probably making a fair killing on auditing all these coins. They've audited Jaguar Swap, Kishu, Inu, Smart Coin, Moon Rat, Cancel Elon, Pepe Moon, Fast Moon. They've been auditing like mofos. And their audits are posted for everyone to read on GitHub. So when we go back to their actual audit in this case, let's go back to the website and open up the audit for this coin in particular. Now, they can see that TechRate made a security audit. A security audit. I feel like most people who look at this may assume that an audit means, hey, this might be scam true. Maybe they're not going to take my money and rough me. This is not what the audit's about. It is a simple security audit. So let's go over it real quick as a community. So when we go back... So here they audited the project called Save the Kids. They mentioned the deployer address, which is important, OX401631B. Remember that address because it's going to be very important in the next bit. So here they've got Save the Kids team, Binance Smart Chain, and all that nonsense. Then they have a disclaimer. This is a limited report on our findings based on our analysis in accordance with good industry practice as at the date of this report in relation to cybersecurity vulnerabilities and issues in the framework and algorithms based on smart contracts, the details of which are set out in this report. In order to get a full view of our analysis, it is crucial for you to read the full report. While we have done our best in conducting our analysis and producing this report, it's important to note that you should not rely on this report and cannot claim against us on the basis of what it says or doesn't say or how we produced it. Make sure to read it in full, okay? So they also want you to conduct your own independent investigations before making any decisions. So it's a massive fucking disclaimer in this entire thing, all right? One could even read this and probably assume, what's the point of an audit if you're disclaiming it this fucking hard? Anyways, let's get down to the idea of here. The entire purpose of the audit was to ensure that the smart contract functions as intended. So basically the fact that they were siphoning money from each transaction, that whole tax that we discussed earlier was actually being sent to the charity address, which they proved or, you know, they, they said that that's what they were doing.
achieving. Now, there isn't any shenanigans when it comes to the actual Binance Charity Wallet. According to the source code, they are sending it to a wallet address. And if you look at each transaction, it does seem to function as intended. Of course, uh, from what I've seen, the values are 0, 0 BNB. So as far as I understand, uh, the value of the coin itself or the token Save the Kids is so low that it's not really registering as something tangible. But there are transactions being made. So there aren't any shenanigans as far as the charity aspect is considered. But then again, with the devaluing currency, how much of that charity really matters when it's been pumped and dumped this hard is the real question to be having. Identify potential security issues with the smart contract. So again, a security audit of the actual coin itself, which any coin is going to do. So what's important here is they've shown this token distribution. Now, of course, you can see that this giant blue pancake swap is basically where people are just selling off their tokens once they're done, like the liquidity, I guess, if you want to put into it in rough terms. Then you have the OX0 dead, which is the burn wallet. And then you have these wallets. So this green is the next biggest wallet after this liquidity, the burn and whatnot. So and then you go down and down and down until this is where like, you know, little Billy put his $30 into it from grandma that she gave him because somebody in the, on YouTube's told them this was going to double overnight, or maybe it might double overnight. Maybe it might be headed to the moon, right? You get that? Now, looking at the audit that was actually posted onto their website, I looked at one of the top 100 token holders that they were showcasing, which was a wallet address known as OX5E96F47004C1DE. I looked into their history, and at the very first transaction ever regarding Save the Kids, they ended up receiving a lot of coins, a lot of tokens from the actual deployer address, okay? So this is the account. This is, yeah, remember that 0 x 40 1631 BD address. Yeah, the deployer. So they ended up receiving a lot of coins from that. Now, this could mean a lot of things, right? It could mean that they were just given the coins for free. But according to an update I found, they actually received these during a pre sale. Now, according to an update that I found here, they actually mentioned that they were selling during this pre-sale to a bunch of applicants, all right? So a mix of public and private. Now, apparently during the pre-sale, the price was around 0 0.006 cents per token. Now, if we looked at the maximum value where it jumped up to about a penny plus, all right, at that point, you can imagine that the more money you put in, like say $100,000, your pump would be worth more at the peak when you have to dump this coin. Now, you can imagine the hazy situation is when you start shilling a coin like this out. And let's say you have a sizable investment, right? Let's say you did put the $100,000 in. Somebody else could put their $100 in, which is all that they can do. And they will see an increase similar to, you know, the percentage that you see. Although, since you put in $100,000, your winnings are obviously much more valuable, right, than the person who puts in, say, 100 bucks. They might be able to make, like, 10 20 30 40 whatever. And let's say that they see that overnight. They might imagine, wow, it might really go to the moon. They might turn the hundred bucks to a thousand, which is a weird gambler mentality. But what'll happen is once you've dumped your hundred thousand dollars, it'll swing the direction of that value and they'll have the hundred dollars turn into like 40, 30 overnight. So they'll lose money. But if you've pumped it successfully, you'll gain money. In the stock market, this would be completely illegal. But because we're looking at an unregulated market, people are just able to pull this off, I guess, without impunity at this point. That is, until the federal government starts to investigate this. Now, long story short here, let's go look at some of these other accounts in the top token holder list and see how they received these coins and how they started to get dumped out into the market as soon as this whole deal began. OX380, right? So OX380 EC27, OX380 EC27, yeah. So that's that's the other one, 27, 11, uh, 11, yeah, it's the same account, right? Uh, you can see that at some point, some way back, if you go all the way to 06, all right, if you go just all the way back here, you can see Save the Kids. So they ended up receiving from the deployer address, from what I assume part of a pre-sale, if you will, they've got 16.6 million tokens. And immediately, literally, 0605, 0605, an hour later, they started flooding that market to pancake swap and selling and selling and selling at buying Binance Peg. So BSC, USD, they were selling and selling and selling and selling. And that's not the only account. Let's look at this one, OX528F3BD4. If you look into the audit that was released, this is BD4BEB. This is another account, right? BEB, F2C. Yeah, this is an actual verified one from the audit. They ended up getting Save the Kids as well. So let's go look at Save the Kids. 
Uh, at some point, they received from the deployer address right here, 0605, 13.5 million save the kit coins. So immediately, as soon as the day, well, the next day, they started selling it. Well, five, six hours later, according to time zones, they started selling it, 347,000. And then they started selling it more and more. And they were doing a bunch of other coins, but you can see here's another transaction. They were just flooding the market with save the kit coins. Now, of course, as you all can imagine, when you actually have millions of tokens out in the market that are now being flooded like this, and this isn't the only account we saw. You can literally look at the top accounts and you can see a pattern of these people receiving coins from the deployer address. And literally, as soon as the actual token launches, they start flooding and selling off these tokens en masse. Now, they claim to have anti-whaling, anti-bot protections. And while that's true, it seems like it's true, given how the transaction history lines up, you can have all the protections in the world, but when you have two groups, Groups of people, right? One group, part of a pre-sale who have millions of tokens versus another group, you know, who's being goaded in by influencers who are buying hundreds of tokens, maybe a maximum of thousands of tokens. There is no conceivable way for that group to combat against the dumpers in this case, right? And even if you don't want to argue that it's coordinated, and sure, there's there's a lot of it can be circumstantial, right? You can't say it just happened, it's coincidental. The fact of the matter is, when you have so many coins flooding the market hundreds of thousands millions of every transactions right uh this will inadvertently affect the price the price will start to drop there's just no way the average joe will ever combat that and uh there's no way to expect to combat that so once these kind of dumps start happening once this flooding occurs uh the the coin is headed towards absolute rock bottom so here they said the most important thing to state here is that ambassadors to save the kids are not paid by us and are not given any tokens for free they don't delete tweets and then dump their tokens as claimed in their telegram as ambassadors were never given any tokens any of our ambassadors are involved in our projects because they bought into and believe in our mission there is so again in this chicanery nowhere have they said that they're giving money but they also haven't said the ambassadors couldn't take part in the fucking pre-sale that we've been talking about for the past 10 minutes that could have been a thing that could have been the chicanery anyways there is a mystery of one ambassador deleting a tweet and another ambassador untweeting a tweet that involved kids and that can be explained as a cross cryptocurrency affair on the day we launched there was a push from the celebrities marketing teams to pull back on the cryptocurrency promoting to not lose fans due to fans possibly losing money that possibility turned out to be as real as the big fucking bang didn't it this took place on the day of the launch and caused our largest ambassador to be forced to remove a tweet promoting us this was not due to any issue between the kits team and the specific ambassador but a conflict between the ambassador and the marketing team so at this point, let's go to the Telegram and see who this other ambassador was. So Summer Ray, for those of you who don't know, is a YouTuber, and her content I find is so milk toast that I couldn't give you a description of it. So if you want to Google it, you can. So on the sixth month, so June, right, fifth June, they started saying our fifth ambassador. This is an administrator account, admin marketing. This is their flair. Our fifth ambassador is the beautiful and amazing Summer Ray with over 25 million followers. Check out her story on instagram here let's check out her story i guess open that up i just want to say if samurai and her team ever copyright claim this video this is well within fair use okay i will gladly fucking go to court you do not want to go under discovery if this shit ever goes to trial all right this is already shady stuff i guess i might just have to mention it because you have to hold your ground on youtube because there are people who are willing to abuse the dmca system now, of course, Samare, who will be next? Let's go, Samare, let's go! And then eventually, literally, <laughs> four days later, is Samare, Samare and Faze really apart? Samare, no. So, yeah, apparently she might have been the one person that had to dodge out of it and leave just because uh, this seemed pretty fucking shady. Samare's team must have come out and told her, uh, yeah, girl, this seems pretty shady. Delete your Instagram story. Otherwise, we might face a lawsuit, and that wouldn't be kosher. Samare was initially involved and put out a tweet. Uh, unfortunately, her management team is skeptical on cryptos and so had her remove it. They're working through that right now, and so maybe we'll see positive things, maybe we won't, but that's where we're at with that. I will say that if you've seen the chat in here and you're only thinking about investing or not because of Summer Rae, then you, your eyes have men open. But that's just me. So you do you, brother. You do you, brother. Not financial advice. That's a lead moderator? <laughs>
Wow, it seems like it understands why they have so many ambassadors to goad these fucking innocent children into signing on and giving money to a coin that obviously didn't go anywhere, right? Pretty, pretty wild and out there. So at this point, one of the trial moderators ended up coming out and saying voice chat recap. So they had a whole chat. FaZe, Lucas, had a meeting with FaZe member at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They have confirmed that issues with management is still ongoing. The FaZe members are disappointed that they are keen on the project. As they are keen on the project, FaZe is a massive esports brand so it may take a little longer to resolve. Whilst they are sorting this out with their management team, the member has agreed with Lucas on getting another influencer he knows on board who is not bound to any contract or management issues. Yeah, no shit, Faith Clan, one of the largest esports organizations, probably clamped down and said, listen, guys, you probably shouldn't be fucking doing this. But shit happens, right? Summer Ray has a very difficult manager who is very difficult to converse with, and her manager basically controls all her publications. Yeah, no shit, so she doesn't make posts like this and potentially open herself up to legal fuck-ups. Ambassadors brought in at the same time as everyone else and were not paid. Again, they haven't mentioned if they weren't part of the pre-sale anyway, so it doesn't fucking matter if they weren't paid now, was it? AMA recaps. We are all in the pinned messages and can be viewed again by all those that missed it. We refrain people from asking a question repeatedly, blah, 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 whatever. Now, CoffeeZilla ended up giving me these screenshots, but he said at this point, this is from the actual administrator account, we got confirmation from our ambassadors that they would not sell anything and simply brought pre-sale to support the project. So, apparently they're confirming that some of them did buy the pre-sale. Some ambassadors, right? Some of our ambassadors brought and have yet to sell anything, right? Uh, the code worked as expected. The big drop was caused by panic selling from an ambassador's tweet being deleted due to management issues on their side. So, again, they're putting a lot of blame on the FaZe Clan people, Rice Gum, and everyone who is ambassadoring for this project. Once the ambassador starts to shill this week, that's the trial moderator we just saw, you don't think their millionaire friends will not invest either? You're crazy to sell right now. Do you fucking see the seething bullshit? They're not even fucking hiding it! The trial moderator just went out and went, you don't think their millionaire friends won't help pump this shit up? Get the fuck out of here. So this takes us to Lucas, where one of the trial moderators who said, Lucas is a dev that was contract invest either? You're crazy. Who is ambassadoring for this project? Once the ambassador starts to shill this week, that's the trial moderator we just saw. You don't think their millionaire friends will not invest either? You're crazy to sell right now. Do you fucking see the seething bullshit? They're not even fucking hiding it! The trial moderator just went out and went, you don't think their millionaire friends won't help pump this shit up? Get the fuck out of here. So this takes us to Lucas, where one of the trial moderators who said, Lucas is a dev that was contracted till the 14th June 21st to write, uh, 2021, to write and set the foundation for the coin. Lucas chose to stay on to work on this project on his own accord, while others left, and he is not the owner of the coin. Recently, the owner of the coin is not responding to Lucas's calls, messages, and this is where a majority of our funding comes from. They put us in a tricky situation, as it looks as if the owners have disappeared and have placed Lucas as the person to blame you know the guy on twitter that we saw at the very beginning of this video that just made his account on the on the month of this actual token launching and their entire tweets consist of either retweeting people talking about this token or mentioning this token yeah that person who totally seemed legitimate to begin with i guess now i'm sorry for their gorilla style videography over here but this is something that me and my good friend barely sociable ended up looking into together one night and uh this is a soft link towards some of the members who are in this token as ambassadors and other individuals whose name you haven't even seen so far. So let's actually go to their website over here. So this is the actual website right now. And of course, we're going to refresh it a few times just to sort of show you that it is the in fact website. So this is savethekids.io. Now on the top left, as you can imagine over here, you can see next to their logo, they have their Telegram link, they have their Twitter, and then they have their Reddit account. So if you go to the Reddit over here, which takes you to save the kids BSC, all right, you can actually see this is the official Reddit account, right? That's got about 159 members, no real problem. However, if you go to the bottom over here where you see the moderator list, and you can see this when you've signed into Reddit, you can actually see the moderators of Save the Kids, and Reddit's being a little bit slow, so give it a second. Now, according to this entire list, you can see that they've got five users, right? Uh, so five moderators. Now, the oldest moderator is 27 days ago by a user named Ego Slice. So you've got everything over here, all that 
that good stuff. Now, if you go to Ego Slice for a second, you can see that Ego Slice's post history starts talking about Boxer Enu. You can see Kids Merch is now live on our website. So this is all posted by that Ego Slice user. Now, at this point, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of Ego Slice's post history, things start to become a little odd. So here you've got r slash Sam Pepper, where Ego Slice constantly gets into. If you have no idea who Sam Pepper is, Sam Pepper is a Twitter account, a massive, uh, well, used to be massive YouTube personality before a whole crap ton of scandals came in. Now he's doing uh, TikTok, which everyone does TikTok these days, I guess. Everyone can trend there, uh, even fetuses. But if you go down into this list, you can see that Sam Pepper doesn't stop tweeting about cryptocurrencies at all. So he talks about CryptoPunk. In fact, what's even weirder is he talks about altcoin pre-sales, not financial advice. This guy's sort of like the poster child for the hashtag not financial advice. I, I really can't imagine that holding up in court, by the way. I've noticed said that like five, six times during the video, but it's a bit hilarious. I told you to get in at launch price. I told you to get in a 2 million market cap. I told you at 5 million again. Now Boxer Inu Finance is at 10 Ant million, right? And if you go back to the beginning of the post history, it's kind of odd that Ego Slice, uh, which again, totally circumstantial here, commented on Boxer Inu as well. So just, just really weird, right? Real, it's been trending number two on Dex Tools. It's legit easy. So yeah, it's kind of odd. But going back to where the causal link is, you can see right here, updated link, live duckling hatching 24 hour stream. So if you click on that, you can see that this takes you to a YouTube link, right? And the YouTube video will be taken down. It's not available. But this is run by a channel called TBC with like 523,000 subscribers. So not a small channel. But if you click on TBC, they've got no content. Videos are... No so everything seems like it's privated, right? So if you go to the Instagram, Twitter, it takes you to another person. But before we even do that, if you click on the community tab... This is a weird breadcrumb trail. I started a new channel, so I have problems with this one. Watch the video and subscribe. Love you guys. Flirting with FaZe K to see how FaZe Jarvis reacts. My crush. Now, it doesn't take Nostra fucking Damas to go back into this video and realize... Wow, those are also two ambassadors in the situation. So this link... And remember, this is a two-year-old post, right? From the, from the actual Reddit. So right here, two years ago, this was an actual post. So there's kind of a weird link. Of course, it's it's a soft link. You know, nothing that's damning silver bullets. Uh, or sorry, the, the smoking gun style perspective. So so many people would like to think. But there's a lot of Sam Pepper posts. You've got Ice Poseidon mentioned over here. Sam Pepper. And eventually, it, this account goes from a, a Sam Stan account. Like live stream fails account right here. Uh, all the way, all right, to, uh, to a good old-fashioned uh, Save the Kids BSC account. So... I don't know. You know, there's no way to ever really indicate who owns the account, but it's just really odd that this link even had to occur, and it was worth mentioning just for the sake of, uh, ju just for just for the sake of documenting everything. So that being said, uh, we're gonna get out of this guerrilla style videography, all right, and go back to something a bit more professional and read the last Telegram post from the uh, moderators over on Save the Kids. So let's head on back. So obviously it's been a rough time for all of us here. No matter what you believe, what you understand, or what you can wrap your head around, the fact is a lot of us are down a tremendous amount of the token, and it's not only unfortunate, but it's just sad. Um, <laughs> on a personal level, it's a good reminder that if something looks like a fish and smells like a fish, and you spend a lot of time trying to figure out who's in charge, then you may be better off finding other tokens to invest in. <sighs> okay, so this is where I just, I, I've had enough. I've had enough, all right? So I'm going to leave it where it is. There's no way that you can say outright that the influencers were scamming, all right? There's no way to 100% prove it. A lot of that is just allegation stuff. But if the influencers are innocent, that means they have also been holding on to bags. The only way the influencers can prove their innocence, if they bought during a presale, if they have the presale coin, right? If they attach their names to this, which is already dumb as fuck, by the way, all right? You do not attach your name to something like this unless you vet it. I have spent like... 30 minutes just vetting this myself and have come to the conclusion that this is something that is wholly fucking unreliable. It is using save the kids in order to create this weird token that is so obviously pump and dump that anybody, all right, even with the worst eyesight could have seen this fucking coming. So how is it that these influencers with actual marketing teams, uh, actual teams themselves didn't come to this conclusion? And it seems like to an extent, some of them did where they had to start deleting tweets. Now I have to understand that if you were deleting tweets, the only way that these influencers if they had bought it was to show that they also have bagged like they also have worthless tokens right now because they didn't sell off as well they believe
believed in the token, right? They weren't a part of the pump and dump. And the other reality is, if these influencers got into this train, I think it's a moral responsibility to st at least state that, yeah, this happened, guys. We're sorry that we publicized this. Instead of deleting the tweets, scorched earth delete, and moving on like nothing happened. Because at the end of the day, using a charity uh, like this, like saving the kids, and then uh, using it, in this case, the people behind this coin, not the influencers, the people behind this coin, at least from what it appears to be, running a standard pump and dump is not only disgusting, but it actually makes me sick to my fucking stomach. And the other thing is, uh, the people that have invested money into this coin because of their favorite influencer, who have now lost their initial investment, and uh, who knows what's going on with their life? Who fucking cares? Ladies and gentlemen, this is all I really have to say. This shit makes me sad. This video is going to be long as fuck. Uh, I'm going to have to find a way to properly whittle it down. But uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out. This is the story of the worst influencer scam I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of them, okay? I'm practically a connoisseur at this point, a specialist in influencer scams, if you will. So believe me when I tell you that. So today I'm gonna to be giving you the short version and then the full juicy story of the new allegations coming out on, quote, Save the Kids token. We already know that Save the Kids was a failed crypto pushed by some of the top influencers on YouTube. If you haven't already seen my video, it's right here. You can also watch Mudahar's video on this. We've covered this in great detail. But what no one knows is whether any of these influencers knew it was going to be a scam ahead of time. They can and have claimed plausible deniability. One of them saying, quote, I have no ill intent promoting any crypto altcoins. It was all a big mistake. They're victims just like the other people. Today, I will be showing that this was a complete lie because I've traced some of these influencers' crypto wallets and will be revealing what they did with the crypto coins they've promoted to you and are now trying to hide the evidence now that it's all coming out. I will also be showing you hard proof that this Save the Kids token wasn't designed to benefit kids. I will show you in the literal code of the coin itself that it was designed from the outset with the intention to extract money from these influencers, fans, and followers. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the $10 million studio. I'm your host, CoffeeZilla, the internet detective. And wow, there's no way to make this a short story. So we're gonna start this case at the beginning. A month ago, a friend of mine reached out to me and told me about a failed crypto project called Save the Kids Token. That wasn't that surprising. I get tips all the time, and I just sort of shelved the project while working on my Tether investigation. But something they had said had stuck with me. They had told me that several huge influencers were on board with this one, making it different. Face K, Face Jarvis, Face Tico, Face Nikan, Rice Gum, Summer Ray. I mean, these are some big names here, some of the biggest in the influencer world. Together, they have well over 50 million followers between them. So the fact that all these huge names are behind something it made me want to revisit it. How could they allow themselves to promote something that fell so flat? As soon as it launched, it was dead on arrival. You know, this got me interested and it had me thinking. I had recently covered the Kim Kardashian promotion. I'd seen the Floyd promote crypto and I was starting to wonder how much money is actually involved in this stuff, right? How much are people paid to do this? I mean, I'm sure these influencers love kids as much as the next guy, but you're not gonna do a commercial like this for free. My name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Ryska. I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids Token. 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 So I decided to look into it. The first thing I did was go to their post-mortem on Save the Kids uh, Hack MD article. They wrote some article basically explaining why it all failed. They said in a post, the most important thing to state here is that ambassadors of Save the Kids are not paid by us and are not given any kids tokens. Ambassadors didn't delete tweets and then dump their tokens as claimed in the Telegram as ambassadors were never given any tokens. Any of our ambassadors are involved in our project because they have bought into and believe in our mission. Ah yes, we'll come back to that later. They believe in helping kids, remember that. So I'm thinking at this point, okay, they believe in their project. You're saying they weren't given any kids tokens, didn't delete any tweets, so why'd the project fail? Additionally, I read about something called the anti-whale, anti-bot mechanism. This is essentially a piece of hard code that prevents large holders of a coin from selling out 
at once. And this piece of marketing was repeated over and over again. Anti-whale measures can't sell more than 0.1% or transfer it in 24 hours. No larger than 20% of a whale's botted wallet can be sold within 24 hours, yes. And the whole idea here is to show people that this project is not gonna be a quick rug pull, which in crypto is a term for when a project gets pumped and dumped immediately on arrival and is abandoned by large investors. And in their postmortem, they say these actual measures did indeed work as expected. It was audited by tech rate. But if everything worked as expected and these ambassadors were just in it for the kids, why did the project immediately crash? Was it an accident? I decided to investigate their telegram to learn more. And I quickly realized the actual members were telling a very different story. Members of the telegram were panicking and insisting that millions were scammed. Faye's team took the profit and left. Why would Faye's risk their reputation for this? You guys do know Faye's clan has done multiple pump and dumps, right? LMAO, there's a reason all their tweets were removed after they sold out on launch. And usually you don't have a whole host of people accusing you of scamming if there was nothing fishy going around. So I decided to do some further digging and this whole idea of ambassadors and not being given any coins turns out to maybe be wrong. According to the admin, they said, ambassadors bought in. We don't have their wallets. Don't know who bought or sold. Interesting, because earlier we were told they didn't sell. And then we get this news. Quote, we got confirmation from some of our ambassadors that they would not sell anything and simply bought presale to support the project. If you don't know, Presale is a special access to people before the token becomes publicly available on the market. Typically, you get much better rates to buy at. But again, this idea that these influencers didn't get anything from this project other than just wanting to help the kids seems to be a little bit disingenuous since it seems like some of them bought in. But again, we're reassured, look, they're not, they're not gonna sell, right? So at this point, I'm thinking things are really fishy. So I reach out to Lucas, the developer. See, after the failure of Save the Kids and everything flopped, he was basically the last person still hanging around the project. And at first he seemed helpless, kind of like a fall guy, honestly. In a post, a moderator explains that Lucas is not the founder of this coin, even though he developed it. He says, quote, Lucas is a dev that was contracted till the 14th of June to write and set the foundation of this coin. Lucas chose to stay on and to work on this project on his own accord, whilst the others left and he's not the owner of the coin. Fair enough. A little bit weird that we don't know who's responsible for this giant coin that's pushed by these huge celebrities, but fine. When I reached out, Lucas responded and was pretty eager to help, honestly. He had said he had been taking a break from Telegram. I said, no worries, thanks for reaching back out. I asked him, who is the true founder of Save the Kids? Because he just seems like a developer, but it seems like he would know. Was it FaZe Clan, Influencer, The Mob? Like, who's involved in this thing? I literally have no idea. He told me, I wish I could let you know, because I really don't. We kept talking, and he told me that he suspected foul play and that this was bigger than one crypto coin. My theory, a group of large money names are going around finding dev teams, finding promoters, and setting up a large hyped launch, then dipping initially. He also told me the only real contact he had was to a guy named Manny and H. I asked for their contact information. He said, no clue, blocked. I got blocked by all of the team, basically. All right, so at this point, I'm pissed, right? Like, here's this poor dev who gets made to be the fall guy for a token that like wasn't his idea. He got, seems like he got hired to do it. Now it's coming on him. So I, I'm like, look, can you think of any tie to the founders? You know, it only takes one clue to find everything. And he responds that he does have a clue. So I got tokenomics at gmail.com that sent me the contract who I also emailed back my PayPal for the 10K they paid me. Then all the rest was from H on Telegram. Bingo. That's all we need. Tokenomics at gmail.com. That's the clue that's gonna unravel everything. I start searching the internet, right? I get the computers running 24 seven. It was all clocked in, but I can't find anything. This account is a ghost. Usually there are a few threads you can pull on, nothing. So then I contact my buddy, Barely Sociable. He starts digging around and pings me back with news I couldn't have ever expected. The kid is lying. That email doesn't exist on PayPal. I used forgot password to check. According to PayPal, there is no account associated with that tokenomics at gmail.com. That's something that I hadn't considered before. Maybe this 
developer, if he's a real person, maybe he's lying to me and he's actually involved in sending me on some wild goose chase. I, I don't want to let him know I'm suspicious yet. So I start asking for, you know, this contract that he seems to have signed. All of a sudden, he gets testy. He asks for a lawyer. Hmm, interesting. The next day, he makes it even more clear. He says, hey, Zilla, sorry. So my lawyer said, don't share anything for now. And also, I'm not sure I'm willing to help out much more. Since your video has been up, I've gotten a lot of death threats and somehow my family even got one. So I'm not looking to further involve myself. Sorry, hope you understand. Just as a quick caveat, I didn't mention Lucas in the video at all that he's talking about. I respond, Lucas, you need to talk, man. If you have nothing to hide, I can make sure you get fairly represented. But parts of your story aren't lining up like this 10,000 from PayPal from tokenomics at gmail.com. I checked that email for PayPal. It doesn't exist. A couple hours later, he deleted his account. All these logs were saved in advance. And at this point, I'm pissed because I'm pretty sure that this kid is full of it or not telling me the whole story of what he knows and is sort of trying to back out of this thing because I never mentioned him in my video and he's sort of all of a sudden, as soon as I start asking bigger questions, he starts clamming up, talking about lawyers. And I'm still no closer to finding out the truth about what happened with Save the Kids. I mean, was it influencers? What Was it this developer? Was it th this anonymous founder, Mr. H? Like, who's behind it all? Who's responsible for this? In my first video I'd put out, I had called the coin a scam, but there's not much you can say as far as did they sell, didn't they? It sure seems like they did, but we don't know who or how much they sold. So it feels like at every turn, I'm stonewalled. The dev isn't talking. I can't trace the wallets. The influencers are staying silent. Now, the thing is, at this point, we kind of know these influencers got in on the pre-sale. We were told as much, but here's the thing. We know where those pre-sales went. That's one cool feature of the blockchain technology. It's public to everyone. You know, where the money was sent, what those wallets then did with those save the kids tokens, exactly when they sold them, if they bought more, etc. It's all out there. The problem is we don't know whose wallets are whose. There isn't some big name on these long blockchain addresses that says like FaZe Clan or Rice Gum. It's just a bunch of random numbers and letters. And without that key information, there's no way of really telling which influencers sold what and if they were just dupes, you know? Maybe they got in over their heads and simply were fooled like everyone else. Maybe they were victims, right? So we really don't have the full story. So for a day or two, I was just like stuck thinking about how can we prove whose wallets are whose. But then I remember something. These influencers have been deleting tweets, like a lot. Some of them deleted their support of Save the Kids project, but that's not all. They've even deleted other crypto projects that they've promoted and done giveaways. And I started to wonder, what if those projects were also scams? What if, at minimum, they were equally sketchy? What if this wasn't a one-time thing? And what if they left some incriminating evidence in one of their earlier schemes? It's worth a shot because like my other leads were drying up quick. So I just start no-lifing the archives. Tweet after deleted tweet I'm hunting through. And finally, I notice a pattern of giveaways with some of these guys. They'll say something like, this is the craziest thing I've ever done. I will double your safe galaxy wallet. This tweet has now been deleted, but I pulled it up in the archives. And then they pick some winners. You won. Just confirming this is the right address? Maybe you see where this is going. Let's go. Here's my wallet address. This is all we need. Using this wallet, we simply cross-check it at the time of giveaway, see that they got the winnings, and then check who sent it. We then check if that address has saved the kids' tokens and other tokens that these people have promoted in the past. If it's actually Phase K's wallet, it should have both Safe Galaxy, which he's promoting here, and Save the Kids tokens, which he also promotes. And it does. Here's the Save the Kids tokens, and here's the Safe Galaxy tokens, which incidentally, he got from the Safe Galaxy deployer, meaning he's not just some random person. He's clearly someone with influence. That's how these tokens do it. They give free tokens to the influencers from the deployer wallet. That's all there is to it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I just repeated that process for each influencer, and I found three confirmed wallets, Phase K, Phase Jarvis, and Phase Nikan. The others remain a mystery. But you know what this means? It means now that we have their wallet address, which is public, we just didn't know whose public wallet address was theirs. Now that we have that, we can see what they did with their Save the Kids tokens. We can check all their so-called 
crypto endorsements that they've been doing and find out do they actually endorse these products or do they dump them immediately on you? So before I show you what they did, just remember these guys, these influencers, Leading up to this token being launched, promotional tweets are sent out, you know, a damn commercial was being made. And remember, it's all to save the kids, right? We're doing this not for money, but to save the kids. This is FaZe Jarvis's wallet. He got in the pre-sale and quickly sold out two thirds of his total holdings within days of the launch. This is FaZe Nikan. He immediately sold about a third of his total holdings and then seems to have held on to the rest. But by far, the really bad one was FaZe K's wallet. He dumped all of his kids' tokens immediately. Within 24 hours, he went from 6.2 billion tokens to four tokens now. That's right, he sold all but four tokens. But obviously, what's interesting here is that not all of these influencers acted quite the same way. You know, FaZe Nikan sold a third right away, held under the rest. FaZe Jarvis sold two thirds over a few days, but FaZe K completely abandoned the project altogether. Why? Well, I think it has to do with their intentions. Look, I, I looked pretty extensively over FaZe Nikan and Jarvis's wallet history. They do not, in my opinion, have a pattern of malicious selling. What I mean by that is when they get a coin, you know, maybe they'll get some coins, sell some, buy some and, you know, sell some more, hold on to something like a trader would. And of course, I'm not saying that promoting garbage scam coins to your fans is okay, right? It's not. But everything they're doing, it seems like they're not premeditating to sell everything. Phase K, on the other hand, whose wallet we're looking at now, should be called Phase Rug, actually. I, what I mean by that is that he not only sold Save the Kids instantly, he has a history of doing that to every project or nearly every project he gets involved in. Like take this coin right here, which is called gamesafe.io. He got these coins, immediately sold them out, and this is the date, okay? So 31 days ago, and then you could see the sell-off was almost immediate. Or take another coin, Safe Galaxy, which he's actually promoted to his fans. He got coins from a deployer wallet once again, and immediately, sells them off. Now, why did he get these free tokens in the first place? Well, it was probably his promotional tweets he did about them. To get Safe Galaxy, follow this guide. Remember to tweet Safe Galaxy with your wallets. I'm in the Telegram group chatting right now. Ask me your questions there. So he's promoting this coin to his followers, telling them how great it is. Meanwhile, his actual actions within his wallet that we can see right here. Again, this is the same wallet that we saw him sell the Save the Kids off in Eclipse. He's just selling everything as fast as humanly possible. Moon Portal, same thing. What I'm trying to say is this is a pattern of deceiving his fans, pumping something and selling it to his fans so he gets the best price. How much money did he make from it? We'll try to calculate that later. And by the way, if it feels like I'm belaboring this point, I am. Phase K has consistently deceived his audience by pushing crypto to them while having a bag of crypto given to him by these coins, I guess, for promotions and selling it immediately to them. And he'll make videos promoting these tokens like Moon Portal. Yo, Moon Portal is out right now, guys. You can swipe up and check it out. He'll also tweet about them like this. He said, wow, moonportal.io making the Robin Hood of crypto. Great project and great team behind it. I'm with them long term 100. Hmm, that's, that, that's interesting, really. With them long-term 100, luckily, we can check your wallet to see what you actually did. It looks like you received the funds 37 days and 18 hours ago, or on May 22nd, and it looks like you sold the coin also on May 22nd. So it looks like, Phase K, you may not understand what long-term quite means. Either that, or you're lying to your fans, which is it? Do you not know what long-term 100 means? Or are you blatantly lying to your fans? This man has zero portal on him. He had 43 billion, now he has zero. And look, why am I showing you this? Well, a few reasons. Number one, while covering this, some people put out a theory that Save the Kids failed because of, of a tweet from Nelk that went out. So they're promoting it, they're telling people that they're ambassadors or whatever. The coin comes out, it starts going up in value, and then Nelk puts out this pose. And after that tweet comes out from Nelk, 
everybody starts panic selling and the save the kids coin plummets down and everyone loses their money. Okay, so the idea here is that it's all of Nelk's fault for calling out these influencers for what they're doing and it caused this big panic sell. It sounds interesting, but it, it's completely false and I wanna debunk this because I think this was likely told to Keemstar to just make these influencers seem like they're innocent, but it's false. I know this because we can actually see when the tweet went out, 7.55 June 5th, and Phase K actually started selling before that tweet. As you can see here, he first started selling June 5th as well, but this is UTC time. And adjusting for that, he started selling at 6.05, which is about two hours before Nelk would tweet. Now this proves that some people involved, like Phase K and others, planned to sell from the start. And even without this simple proof, by the way, we know that he would have sold anyway from the start because Phase K always sells from the start. That's what he does with almost all the coins he's promoted before this. Now, the second reason I'm showing you all this evidence is because I absolutely refuse to let anyone spin this into a narrative of like Phase K being naive with crypto, not understanding what he was doing, right? He, he's innocent. You know, just look at his apology. I want you all to know that I had no ill intent promoting any crypto altcoins. I honestly and naively thought that we all had a chance to win, which just isn't the case. He was naive, guys. This is yet another lie, because if you thought everyone had a chance to win, you wouldn't be running for the exit like someone just shouted fire in these coins, right? Face K knew he had to be the first one to get out of these coins in order to profit. Like he's done so many times before, he sold out of Save the Kids token that he was an ambassador of within 24 hours. Now, <laughs> I wish I could tell you who else sold and what else they did, because I'm sure the others aren't completely innocent. But for now, a lot of these wallets remain a mystery. But now that we know how these influencers, you know, spent these coins when they sold them, I wanted to count up how much you can make from a rug pool like this, right? That was one of our big questions. So I called up my buddy, Some Ordinary Gamers, to help me calculate how much someone like Phase K stands to make from these crypto promotions. We crunched the numbers by counting how many tokens he sold times the price at that time. And we got a rough estimate of how much you stand to make. So really, really rough estimate. When you look at the point of sale around the sixth, when the actual thing was going on, the peak of it, I think each calculation ended up being around 29,000, 30,000 for being a little bit more liberal on that. But uh, yeah, it's about what we saw for Save the Kids. Now, of course, when you factor in all the other ruck pulls, uh, some of them went as high as like 40, 50, 60,000, right? Depending on the severity of that pull. So cumulatively, if you look at some wallets, some people who are, you know, alleged to be behind multiple accounts. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I mean, were you surprised? I felt like it wasn't as much as maybe I thought that I thought surely they're not risking their reputation for something that's, you know, for an influencer as big as they are, doesn't seem to be like insane. Yeah, I mean, I, you got to imagine for people who have entire personalities built around mansions and supercars right you're really risking your peak your 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 great career on 30,000 which is a lot of money but it's certainly not enough to warrant putting that much risk on you you know what do you think's going to happen to these guys i mean if the sec wants to investigate they're going to get uh, they're going to get a fine maybe maybe prison down the front line i mean the government doesn't screw around when it comes to financial crimes that's that that I think we know. There you have it. Somewhere in the range of tens of thousands of dollars per crypto coin that was rugged, sometimes more, sometimes less. But at this point, I have to tell you that Phase K completely denies profiting from Save the Kids token. I reached out to him in preparation for this video, and he said the following quote, overall, the value of the token I purchased is down considerably from my purchase price. I definitely have not profited from Save the Kids token. He also said he paid for some of the expenses. Quote, I helped pay for the exchange listing or whatever could help it. The purpose of the project is charitable giving. It's in that spirit and with that intent that I was involved and I put capital into it. Hmm. I don't know if I buy this. Like, okay, let's just say you lost money on this token. I disagree that selling the coins that you own within 24 hours of a charity coin is in the spirit of charitable giving like you say. Also, there's the small matter of all these other tokens, which he failed to comment on. But even the fact he was able to sell all his tokens in 24 hours brings up sort of an interesting question. Whatever happened to the anti-whale mechanism, 
Remember, wasn't it supposed to prevent people from selling off this quick? I mean, you were only supposed to sell 20% within 24 hours. So what happened? How was he able to sell off this fast? I started to wonder about this. And that's when I got a telegram from someone inside the project who messaged me anonymously. Hey, Coffee, I remember something. Lucas, the developer, told us before the launch that the owners asked him to modify the anti-whale system from 24 hours to a minute. So they were 100% planning to dump on everyone. If that's true, that's the smoking gun right there. It turns this project from a charity coin with some bad actors that sold off right away into a premeditated fraud. It turns it from an accidental rug pull into an intentional one. So obviously, I immediately started looking through the code because this guy said he heard about it, but he didn't know where to find it. And so I get to digging. Back to the lab again, boys. I can't overstate how much time I wasted looking for this stuff. And yes, it turns out that Lucas, the developer, had created multiple test coins before launching the main one. In particular, interest was Save the Kids Test 2 and the real Save the Kids token. I compared their contracts using BSC Scan, and there was a single change in the code. The old code of Save the Kids Test 2 read that you must wait a full 24 hours before you sell again. The new code, which changed at the last minute, changed this anti-whale to one minute. You must wait a minute before you sell again. And this is the only change. They changed the token just so they could premeditate this whole thing and almost remove the anti-whale mechanism completely. They turned it from being a code that wouldn't let whales sell off in less than five days into a code that lets you sell off in five minutes. Again, five days, they changed it to five minutes right before launch. So obviously I start trying to reach out to Lucas because this is what he seems to have kept from me, right? Like he acted innocent initially. He didn't tell me about any of this, but this shows that at least he was a part of this, right? He was complicit in this. Finally, I managed to get him into a discord call where I confronted him. I'm seeing things from you that are deeply uh, troubling in the code. And you went AWOL on me as soon as I talked to you about this tokenomics at gmail.com not existing. I didn't see you sending that. Okay. Tokenomics at gmail.com does exist. No, no, not on PayPal though. You said you got paid 10K at PayPal and we, we forgot passworded oh. it and it doesn't I got exist. 10K in, no, I got 10K in BNB. Like I, that's what I was given from the token directly. Oh, you said you said in the Discord. You no, said. the PayPal is from Redbubble, I believe, but I don't have that. Then I asked him about this anti-whale change. So Lucas, you hard-coded in. So what I mean by you hard-coded in this thing to be a scam is that I know that you changed the anti-whale measures last minute to make it easier to dump on people. Yep, yep, I know. I've, I've talked about that in the like in all the AMAs. That's a, that's a scam, to, Lucas. That's a scam. Coffee. This is what I was told to do. I'm a com contracted. I, I don't know what to tell you. This is exactly what I was told to do. I also asked him if he doesn't know the creator of this project, how did he even get involved in the first place? This random guy named Manny reached out to him and he believed him. Very coincidental that you would just be like picked out of like a rabbit out of a hat and you're so close and you have no yeah, association. Yeah, I get that. Okay. So you have no, there's no explanation I mean, for why I that do. is. I don't know the randomly picked out of the hat. This was a huge surprise to me. Wait, oh, I remember when here, um, I was talking to Manny and he said that we're gonna have influencers on this project. I think I can find this picture actually. And I was like, you're gonna have influencers on this project. And he's like, yep. And he started naming names. Uh, and one of them was Kay. And I was saying, I don't, I'm sorry, but like, obviously I don't believe you. He told me, no, actually he required proof. And this is what it was. This was me being proven that this was actually influencers were on board on this. And I was like, oh, okay. Sh Obviously, I would work for somebody like that. Like, I don't want to work for a project where there's like people behind it. That's crazy. It's going to be huge. If I had, I guess my argument would be if I had direct connections, then I wouldn't have to be sent a picture like this that was like to prove to me. So I guess that is what I'm trying to show. It says Lucas and Manny. And Manny. Yep. Lucas and Manny on this. To your mind, does this mean that Fraser was in on this from the get go? Like, even on the premeditation of this app? Because it doesn't seem like he was brought in as an afterthought. It seems like he was in this from the beginning. I assume all the influencers probably were in this from the beginning because those were already lined up like, straight off the bat. Wow. 
So Phase K was in it from the beginning. Now, I confronted Phase K on this and asked him how he knew Manny and who Manny was. He denied knowing him. He said, I believe he is a friend of the dev or a dev. I'm not sure exactly who he really is. Now that's funny because the dev says he doesn't know Manny at all. Manny knew Phase K and Phase K took a picture with the guy's name on it. So I find this pretty hard to believe you don't know a guy and then you're writing his name on paper. I also asked Lucas who was behind the anti-whale change. Obviously, this is one of the most malicious parts of all the code. He told me it was sort of talked about in a group of a lot of influencers. It was a huge group chat, which he was later kicked out of talking about the anti-whale thing. Do you remember which influencers were telling you that you need to basically speed up the time that they can basically dump more of their- So the only one I remember because he's on my screen, I know Smeef was in the group chat. I don't know if he was one of the main ones who was like actually messaging it, but I know there was a general consensus of them being concerned. So they weren't the ones telling me to lower it. They were very concerned with, and I was just trying to explain, this is good for the product, like blah, 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 like 24 hours good. Why do you think they were concerned about that? Well, I mean, obviously now, probably because they want to dump right away. Another interesting moment of the call was he told me that a YouTuber named Joel Morris was also involved. Now, Joel Morris is the creator of X Academy Token. He's another one of these guys claiming to be serious and trustworthy with crypto. So what did this guy do when he got in the presale? Joel Morris was involved as well. Do you remember what uh, address he gave you? He should have given you an address to like check, right? Uh, yep. Can I see it? I have it. Let's do a quick check here. Yeah, easy scan. But, uh, oh, he immediately dumped. Oh, <laughs> man. He t looks like he took Joel Morris took advantage of your little yeah, crypto rule yeah, here. Four hours, everything right away. And then within, it looks like, yep. Yep, within a very short amount of time, he completely dumped his bags. He sold immediately to drive the price of a kid's charity token even further into the dirt. By the way, you'll notice here that Joel Morris took advantage of the change in the anti-whale code because he was selling literally every minute. So clearly, these influencers knew that the code has changed. Now, honestly, this whole thing is so vomit-inducing. Like, this developer's telling me he was misunderstood and is just following orders. You have Face K saying, he didn't make money despite trying his hardest to be the first to sell off. You've got basically everyone claiming to be innocent, but you couldn't design a bigger token scam and a bigger commercial for it. The biggest influencers in the world all saying that it's such a great opportunity. Now, the last person we need to talk about is Sam Pepper. This is an old YouTuber who, according to Reddit posts, now works with FaZe. Apparently, he's their camera guy or comes up with video ideas or something. The point is, he's close by them, he talks to them, etc. He kept coming up in my investigation, even though he wasn't a public part of the project. He apparently was one of the people... CryptoZoo.co I am so excited about this project. It's 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 so fun. It's a really fun game that makes you money. A fun game. I'm scamming a scammer today, but I won't know if my plan works until the end of this video because as I'm recording it, my plan hasn't really come together.
people promoting this thing on Reddit and creating the mod team. I was told as much by the mods themselves. The biggest thing that, that I know is that Typo, who was a mod, asked me to be a mod before launch. I know that him and some of his guys uh, were brought in by Pepper to mod this stuff up. Hmm. So Pepper was brought in to mod this thing up. So what does Sam know? How is he involved? And how much did he really organize? A different mod reached out from the group and told me that the group had been talking and realized that maybe Sam was the common link. They said in a conversation that Sam handled the presale, as far as I know. And that, quote, Sam deleted his telegram. Why did he do that? I had someone actually reach out to Sam, and he said that he also had no idea who Manny was. He seemed to be in charge of finding the mod team and says that he's not the mastermind. After all, Phase K apparently brought him on board. Quote, that makes no sense. How would I already be on board if I found out from K about the project? When I found out about it from K, he was already an ambassador. Wait, so Phase K got Sam Pepper in the coin which was later confirmed by Phase K himself. He said, they asked me if I have chat mods, but I don't. I knew Sam had mods, so I asked for his, not for Sam himself. Now bear in mind, Sam Pepper doesn't have a, a great reputation around crypto. He's known as Scam Pepper by some of the cryptocurrency community for all of the, the rug pulls that he promotes himself. But nevertheless, it's all leading back to Phase K, who himself is insisting that, oh no, I didn't make any money that he's the victim in all of this. So where does that leave us? Fact one, we know Phase K lied about being some naive crypto investor. He's got a history of dumping nearly every crypto project he's ever been involved in and promoting it to his fans. Fact two, we know this thing was designed from the absolute get-go to be a scam. You bring people in with this anti-whale mechanism and then at the last minute, you remove it. Number three, we know a lot of other YouTubers were involved, even besides the ambassadors themselves. People like Joel Morris, who sold off immediately. In fact, four, we know that the real victims were you, the fans of these guys who got in believing that you were somehow supporting kids by getting involved. That's the biggest lie of this whole project, that kids were gonna be helped by this. The only thing we really don't know at this point is who the creator and mastermind of this entire operation was. I have my suspicions, but no proof. Whoever they are though, they successfully used the greed of influencers and their following to design one of the grossest rug pulls of all time that used charity to take money from fans who are less well off and give it to the people who were shilling the thing, I guess? And it's not for trying that we don't know who that is. I've asked everyone involved. Lucas, I've asked all the influencers I've been in contact with. Everyone claims to not know who this mastermind is. Is it this Manny guy? I also heard of a character named H in the Telegram who apparently was ordering everyone around. They all say they have no idea who these guys are. And that's either yet another lie or these influencers are just really dumb and didn't bother to do due diligence on the project that they were about to promote to their millions of fans. All right, well, that basically uh, concludes my investigation. I, I hope the people involved with this face justice for it. And I also hope that two parties learn from this. One, you, the viewer, should now be sufficiently disgusted by the actions of these so-called influencers. The second group that should learn from this are influencers. If you are an influencer, let me tell you from the bottom of my heart. Stop it, get some help. If you don't, the feds are gonna eventually stop you anyways. What was done here today with this token could be considered illegal. John McAfee literally got charged doing the same things you guys did. And the fact that you're throwing away your name and brand for this is disgusting. Stop posting on social media about crypto period. If you're not a financial advisor, stop acting like a financial advisor. And that's it. I tried to tell you guys it was going to be a crazy one, but man, even I didn't realize how long this thing was going to be. Now I can finally rest, stop covering these stupid influencer scams, you know, and just really just relax. Hello there. That's Justin Bieber. I'm Perez Hilton. And if you like Dogecoin, you'll love 
baby doze coin. Oh God, no. I'm doing the same thing as you. Holding my doink. That's what I'm doing. This is a coin I believe in. Oh, damn. I know what you mean. This ain't what it seemed. Nothing but a trick trying to sell me on a dream. But that was where you lost me. Wake up and smell the coffee. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and it's been just over a week since a video we made blew up talking about the Save the Kids scam. Since then, me and CoffeeZilla have been sitting together at least two nights ago, uh, where we sat down for seven hours going through transaction to transaction. Now, when I made that video, we basically covered the entirety, uh, at least at the time, of Save the Kids, a charity token all about saving the kids that was pumped and dumped to no end. Now, since then, a lot has actually happened, and this video is going to be long, and it's going to be full of a lot of things, but I want to cover every base as much as I can. This won't actually even be the last video. We are actually looking into a further audit, and we're getting full interviews with people who are just now starting to come out in troves to me and CoffeeZilla and everyone else who's looking into this. So it's a big story, but this is going to be a long video. Sit down, relax, grab a beer, because we're going to dive in even further into Save the Kids. Part dos. Now, since then, FaZe Clan itself ended up putting out a statement where they said, we have made the decision to remove K from FaZe Clan and have suspended Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico until further notice. So one expulsion and, a, and the rest of them suspensions. FaZe Clan has absolutely no involvement with our members' activity in the cryptocurrency space. We strongly condemn their recent behavior. The trust and respect of our fans has been and will always be our number one priority. Now, this announcement is the one thing that threw the oil into the fire, so to speak. You know what I mean? It really blew things up beyond a point that nobody could not cover it. You had news sites covering it, Twitch streamers, YouTubers, everyone in the space was looking at Face Clan with eyes open. And honestly, it's not like they could have dug their head into the sand and pretended nothing fucking happened. Because the evidence that we looked at last time was already pretty damning. Coffee's second video was already damning when he dug up the actual address addresses based on the giveaways trace them back to the original account holders which are believed to belong to these members in question some of them at least so again to reiterate if you go to the winner's wallet which you can look up on bsc scan you will find safe galaxy tokens now again you have to see around the time of the giveaway in this case it's two days after look at the address that sent that safe galaxy coin now you can go to that address which is ox 5 af 8 d 67 b 22 and you can see in their entire transaction list or token transfers, they not only have saved the kids from the uh, from the actual deployer address OX401, but you can even go further beyond and actually find the uh, Safe Galaxy token. So they own Safe Galaxy. In fact, clicking that right there, you can see the Safe Galaxy where they earned, uh, got from the deployer, and they started sending around to numerous addresses. And you can see it more strongly in this giveaway too, where you can see that the Safe Galaxy deployer around the fifth of May. And then you can see just a day after, you can start seeing multiple accounts being sent a safe galaxy token. Now to understand, a statement like this has to be made because what effectively happened was actually pretty illegal. I know a lot of people have told everyone, and there's this weird belief that people think that promoting cryptocurrency isn't really illegal. It's not regulated by the SEC. And to an extent, there are regulation issues regarding cryptocurrencies right now because they're super new. But at the end of the day, what we saw here was very, very, very illegal, okay? Because effectively what happened with Save the Kits token, or really any other token that gets it's pumped and dumped is effectively what happened to John McAfee. If you don't know, John McAfee is a late computer cybersecurity CEO who's actually found dead in a Spanish prison cell uh, with suicide as the cause of death. All right, it's I'm just going to go with what officially is out there. Now, at this point, he was basically granted an extradition order to the United States. Okay, basically, he was going to be sent back for a litany of crimes that he was being charged with. Now, some of those crimes, all right, included unpaid tax disputes. I believe that's actually one of the reasons he was actually being extradited but in a lot of ways he had a bunch of other complaints now this one came straight from the DOJ so in this entire document this indictment over here the summary of the fraudulent schemes okay so 19a the scalping schemes let's read this real quick the first scheme involved a fraudulent practice called scalping 
which is sometimes referred to as a pump and dump scheme. In this scalping scheme, McAfee and other McAfee team members, including CC1, brought large quantities of publicly traded cryptocurrency altcoins, which qualified as commodities or securities at inexpensive market prices. Published false and misleading tweets via the official McAfee Twitter account recommending those altcoins for investments to members of the investing public in order to artificially inflate or pump up their market prices and then sold or dumped their investment positions in those altcoins into the short-term market interest stimulated by McAfee's deceptive tweets. Through the scalping scheme, McAfee and other McAfee team members, including CC1, collectively earn more than $2 million in illicit profits while the long-term value of the recommended altcoins purchased by the investors declined substantially as of a year after the promotional tweets. Now, reading that complaint, it's honestly very hard for me not to find the similarities. Like, if you were to take all instances of McAfee team and McAfee in that statement and replace it with Save the Kids token and the various people that have associated themselves with this token, it's very hard to not find or look at this situation and find a lot of similarities, okay? Again, I am not a lawyer, and if there's anybody better to legally explain this, absolutely feel free. But it looks like the similarities are quite glaring. Now, ever since then, me, CoffeeZilla, Barely Sociable, Nerd City have been investigating in our own for all of the aspects regarding Save the Kids token. And while we've all had our own month-long observations into this charity token, literally looking at it from life to this point, uh, in less than a week, in less than a day after I uploaded my initial video, the Reddit community, Save the Kids BSC, suddenly went private. The actual website has all but gone, even from Google search results last time I checked. But luckily, I do coincidentally have video of it. And while it's interesting, the website disappearing, even some of the video material, hell, before it went down, a lot of the influencers magically disappeared. A lot of their endorsements, their tweets, even the initial landing page video that you could watch has all but gone. One aspect that I didn't cover and I really fucking wish I did was when Save the Kids, chair, when Save the Kids Tokens website came out, I actually Googled Save the Kids, and I also came across another legitimate charity, Save the Children, an international NGO that's actually based out of the United Kingdom. One thing I want you to look at between these two websites is look at the layouts of the page. This could literally be chalked up to, again, them using a similar web layout anyways, but look at the similarities in the logos, the color scheme. Look, I'm not a trademark copyright expert or a lawyer, okay? I feel like I've done enough YouTube to know my way around copyright, but I have to imagine the actual charity, the international NGO, wouldn't feel too happy knowing that they could potentially be mistaken at first glance with this controversial charity token, okay? It almost felt like when this website was created, there was some level of intentions to sort of piggyback off of an actual website. I have talked to people literally investigating this that have confused either website between each other. So again, I have to say for the record, I have to say in my opinion, it feels really shady that that had to be a thing. Now, even looking further into the website again, let's go over a couple points, okay? A charity token, which of its own admission has a 3% transaction tax which is then divided into 1% locked liquidity, 1% back to the holders, and then 1% back to charity. You know, doing the goddamn math in the situation should probably tell you that this coin that was supposed to be the saintly endeavor wasn't exactly designed to be as charitable as it really could be. The website's gone, and the last time we looked into it, the value on the token itself has pretty much plummeted to just over 90% from where it initially was. It hasn't recovered, save the kids, is gone, okay? Those kids are all but missing, okay? They're over. Now, in the last video, I sat down and broke a scheme where some of the top wallet addresses were holding the Save the Kids token. They received it from deployer addresses. They had it ready to go. The day of the 5th and 6th when the promotional tweets were going out and the value of the coin was skyrocketing because while these people were hyping up a coin, people were putting in $100, $50, $20, whatever investment that they could to swing the value of the token upwards just by having the volume. Now, by magnifying that scale again, by if one person puts in $100, not going to be that big of a deal. But let's say you have a thousand people putting in a hundred dollars each, that's really going to matter, okay? That's going to fluff that speculative value of that coin to its highest zenith, and then the various holders of that token who held massive volumes just basically dumped their coins onto the market. And because there was a code change, the whale code, the anti-whaling code, which prevented, which would have prevented all these 
these account holders from dumping coins you know it would limit their transactions to once every 24 hours was magically changed a day before okay so like just before the coin went live they got rid of the anti-whaling code and the people who had the massive amount the pre-sale tokens were just dumping that onto the market killing the coin in progress there wasn't gonna be any saving the kids okay the kids were never gonna be saved just put that through your heads now since the release of my last video rice gum of all people all right which is one of the people that I pointed out, actually singled in my title, was one of the keep influencers brought onto the Save the Kids operation said this during a live stream. Okay, let's roll that one. Shit. All right, look, we've made the decision to remove Ke Hey, yo! No but, no, but that's what I'm saying, though. No, 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 look. And so he has suspended Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico because, um, you know, phase, yo, K, yo, K, yo, me and, I told you guys, bro, me, me and K are hella close. Like me, like me and Kay are hella close, so, you know what I'm saying? Y'all talking about scamming and da-da-da, like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, y'all need to tap in type shit. Tap in, bro. Yo, if y'all trying to scam, hit my line, bro. If y'all, yo, if y'all trying to scam, hit my line. Y'all need to tap in with me. Again, I don't know if he's trying to be, like, hilarious right now by saying all this shit, but, like, when he's saying, hey, I'm close to Fraser, uh, or Kay in this case, if you're trying to scam, hit my line, it almost really sounds like he's trying to throw out some weird accusation. I'm not gonna put words in his mouth. I'm just saying, from first glance, it's kind of weird when he said that. Also, when you're involved in this kind of a token, you know, when you're involved in this controversy, it's probably not advisable to say that if you're trying to scam, hit up my line. I'm sure a judge wouldn't laugh at that like i know that rice has a history of trolling i'm gonna give you full disclosure but like at the same time bro there's times for you know joking and there's times to be serious right now i wouldn't be making jokes like that okay i'm just putting it out there that said though i'm gonna move on from here and focus on the next person now, the next target in this entire situation is a guy known as FaZe Nikon, okay? Nikon, whatever we're gonna go with. Now, Nikon did actually get back to me. I'm gonna just state for the record, I did try my best to communicate with some of these people. A lot of them didn't respond back. Some of them I couldn't communicate with. But to give Nikon the credit where he is, as lawyered up as he is, he did actually get back to me. So I'm just gonna mention that for the record. Anyways, looking at Nikon's wallet in this situation, all right, let's go look at what this guy did with Save the Kids again. Now, this wallet address, OXD1ABCA, is one that I'm linking to him because it's based on actual BNB transactions. So again, let's look at the blockchain, okay? It doesn't lie. Now in the blockchain, one of the actual BNB transactions that actually happened, which was substantial, is one that I'm gonna put out right here. OX7167DFF885. Now this wallet address, I want you to remember for a little bit. He sent 20 BNB twice within an hour period, okay? To understand how much 20 BNB is, let's look at the price on the transaction. So we're gonna open the transaction details and we're going to check the value at the time of transaction. So it was around 8,000 dollars that was sent now eight thousand dollars and you can multiply that again so sixteen thousand dollars was sent to ox7167 now this wallet and this is a excel spreadsheet that we were sent which is alleged to be the sam pepper whitelist wallet okay this is something that was sent to us and the reason why i can sort of get behind its legitimacy is that this will play a very key role in establishing uh the the the, the save the kids scam in general so let's look at the top here this is send bnb so you see how that wallet address ox7167 dff885 matches to what was sent this is a pre-sale amount that these individuals would send to that wallet that would basically allow them to then get the pre-sale wallet tokens from the deployer address for save the kids so now let's go back to nikon's wallet the bep 20 token transactions so nikon here received from the deployer address and i'm going to change the age to match the times here so 0605 he received 2.5 million tokens okay now he sold a chunk of tokens but he still has 1.8 million sitting in his kid's token wallet all right there are a couple things to point out however and we're going to look at them right now now one thing i also want you guys to really look at in the transaction list and i'm going to put this wallet address that you're going to keep in the back of your mind right now this is ox02259 i want you to remember that string of characters because it's going to play a key role later on in this video
Now he sent that account 8 BNB, which at the time of transaction was around $4,500. Why would Nikon's wallet be sending, on 0516, Nikon's alleged wallet be sending to this account that sum of money? Now I've been using the term alleged wallet a lot in this video and I'm just trying to cover legal basis, but if you look at just this transaction list, the founder wallet sent 2.5 million tokens, but this account didn't sell all of it. They, they basically cashed out from what it seems like their initial investment. So remember when they sent those 20 BNB to that pre-sale wallet, OX716? They basically got the amount of token, they sold their initial investment, but if they're still holding on to tokens that have lost over like 85% of their value, it's kind of safe to say that this wallet holder did lose their money, okay? Like they, it, it, regardless to say it isn't as bad as any other operator in this entire situation, okay? This, is, this isn't as egregiously terrible. It's bad that the participation happened, but they're still holding on to a good chunk of their token. I think it's about two thirds. In fact, the only guy in this entire scenario, Tico, who basically went by unscathed because neither me or Steven could really find his wallet addresses. And trust me, we tried. We actually ended up going to Keemstar and he reached out to Tico because Keemstar is involved with the phase guys pretty heavily. He ended up getting this confirmation from Tico. I never sold a single coin or made a single dollar off this. Legit have not sold any of it. Not even my own investment to put in. None. Zero. And he said, I need your wallet to clear you and then he gave his wallet address okay so at this point we're gonna audit phase tico and we're gonna try to isolate this guy from this situation because he is actually fairly innocent he might be the only motherfucker who wanted to save the goddamn kids so not only did he get the money from the deployer address he didn't dump a single token of kids and then he also bought more kids with his own money and at least that shows that he believed in this charity token idea the fact that this is the one account that we have found that received money from the deployer address and didn't dump a single token shows that tico is one of the most innocent people in this and should actually be let back into phased clan now let's move on to the actual big meat and potatoes of the entire situation okay this is the new development now this is something that i was waiting for i had to to wait for this video before I could make this one, okay? So here's a uh, Frasier actually responding. The truth about save the kids. I actually don't want to just watch this video by myself. So I'm going to call up my good friend, Coffeezilla, and we're going to sit down and react to this bumbling shit pile together, okay? So let's go right to that. All right, dude, let's watch this video. I, All right. I've only seen this one time. I could... It made me so upset, but I've, I've got to watch I've it. I've seen you. this a million times. Let's do it. One minute, 58 seconds. Normally, audience, okay. we don't, I don't watch these things in full. I'll cut them up. I probably will do that, but it's not that long of a clip. Let's see what this apology is all about. I know I haven't posted in a while, and there is so much that I want to say about what's happened in the past month, but because of legal reasons, all I'm allowed to say right now is this. Please. Please do not believe what you're hearing online. All of these people making videos think that they know the truth and that they know who's responsible when they just don't. Okay, all right, pause the 20 Stop seconds. It. Stop it. Ah! Oh, dude. Okay, listen, I could probably understand this for a million things, you know what I mean? I could probably understand, like, hey, if we were running off speculations, like if we were some stupid T-channel. However, we looked at the blockchain. You can't hide it. You used a technology blockchain that... doesn't lie. You used a technology that literally trans... It keeps a log down to the second... Like how do you how do you how do you say you can't trust it? Come on, you bet you back traced the wallet through a giveaway. All right, which by the way, audience, there's a massive story on that. Just stay tuned. So this is the truth, all right? I lost money on Save the Kids token. Now, because I believe in fair and objective reporting, completely free from personal attachment, I'm going to give Fraser the complete pass here. What he said is actually true. If you go back to when we looked at Nikon's wallet with the 20 BNB transaction to OX716, which is the pre-sale wallet for Save the Kids, Fraser did give his own money to this wallet. And given on the dump and the dates lining up in the blockchain, it does in fact look like he didn't make any money regarding it, okay? In fact, I'm, I, I have to take him on his word. It does sound like he did lose money. So again, to be fair and objective, I am going to believe Fraser here regarding that state. And for full transparency, I didn't calculate every single dollar out of all of these Save the Kids sales. So maybe if he did go above the initial investment just by a bit, I certainly don't think it's substantial enough to even warrant the political fallout he's had in the entire community because of this Save the Kids token. But what actually upsets me the most is that anybody else was hurt. 
So we've uncovered significant evidence which confirms that a dishonest person- Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Okay. Yeah. So post-editor notice, me and Steven decided to cut some sections out of this reaction like this one for legal reasons. Um, just because we really agree that speculation isn't-
in the thing that we're going with. We're going to try to keep that as out of the story as possible. And we're going to look at things from a factual point of view. So we're going to really look at the blockchain for the most part. And when it comes to our personal speculation, we're removing it from these videos. Okay. Used his trust with me to scam everybody.